the wall one more effects to Mars. And what you're seeing here is a graph from the European Space Agency. It shows altitude versus temperature, of course, temperatures in Celsius, which I detest. Um, this is a lead-in to this video I'm going to do. We're going to do, after I get done with this little segment, we're going to do some live action. I'm going to walk along, and we're going to show... The New York winter was just as not going away. We have nothing in sight as far as spring, and this is St. Patrick's Day 2018. There's no spring in sight. And we're going to have a little discussion about global warming, and we're going to use Venus as a model. So, get ready for an unusual video, a hybrid video. We have this part, and then we're going to do live action. So, we're going to cut to live action. Uh, altitude's on left, temperature's on bottom, and you see, predictably, temperature goes down as you get higher up in altitude. So, stand by for live action. Well, this is our facts of Mars. This is part two of the video. I showed you the graphic. Now we're going to take a little walk and we're going to discuss the global warming thing in the context of the planet Venus. Scientists aren't going to like this. They're not going to be happy with me at all. But too bad. I don't care. They're liars. And we're going to demonstrate why. And we're going to take a look at this extended winter, which should be on its way out, but isn't. No end in sight. Okay. Now, my location is Hollywood Falls. favorite hangouts and we are in a public park I think it's called Bowen Park if I'm not mistaken let's try identification look around now what are the differences between Earth and Venus what makes Venus so hot that much hotter than uh, the Earth well, the first obvious difference is the distance. It's a lot closer to the sun. That one's conceded by scientists. They have no choice. Number two. And this is one that the uh, scientists claim is happening. They claim that the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of Venus is causing the planet to warm up uncontrollably. So, uh, well, it has caused it to warm up. Whatever. They, they call it a runaway greenhouse effect. That's the premise here. But here's the major differences between Earth and Venus. One thing is, the Venus doesn't rotate the way the Earth does. It's a very, very slow rotation. I don't have the exact numbers here. I'm out on foot. But it doesn't matter. A day is, you know, a, hundred, a couple hundred Earth days long or something like that. It doesn't quite match uh, the rotation around the Sun. So, they do have day and night. I mean, I shouldn't say they, but the planet does have day and night. I think it's very hot on day side. That's another difference. Well, the big difference is, and as I showed in my graphic, the big difference 
is that the atmosphere is very thick. It's 90 atmospheres. 90 atmospheres of Earth. Now, that's the reason I showed the graphic. It's because as you get higher and higher, temperatures go much further down. I was hoping to find a source that showed uh, Earth normal air pressure somewhere up away from the surface of the planet so we could uh, compare temperatures. But I think the point has been made. Now, if you go to Hawaii, that's one place where you can go snow skiing in the morning and go ocean surfing in the afternoon. And the reason is that the air is much thinner there. The air is very much thinner up on top of a mountain than it is down on the ground. Down on down at sea level, I mean. This is the part that the uh, scientists all always leave out of the discussion, because they don't want to hear. Well, the atmosphere is thicker, so it's going to be a lot hotter. They don't want to hear that. But it's an inescapable physical fact. We've all seen pictures of spring. You know, spring, summer settings, and mountain in the background, there's snow on them. It's the same thing on Venus. The higher up you get, the cooler it gets. Now, you take 90 atmospheres, that's going to hold a lot of energy. The reason it holds. It's just that much thicker molecular, in a molecular sense. That's why you have that. Now this is uh, Honeyoy Creek. We're seeing. That brings up my second point. Now this is. Kind of still frozen over. It shouldn't be. Not at this time of March. We should be headed towards spring and we're not. Spring is not on the horizon yet. I've looked at long term forecasts and they're still talking about 40s at best. And mid 20s in midweek. That should not be happening. But around here you never know. So, what is special about water? Well, Venus doesn't have any oceans. This is another thing that our marvelous and brilliant scientists never mention. If you look at an ocean, you're seeing what's known as a heat sink. Besides the fact that it's an ocean. Sometimes, the ocean will be a little colder than normal. And it'll tend to draw heat out of the atmosphere. And we have what's known as a La Nina event. And sometimes it goes the other way. The, oceans, the Pacific Ocean is too warm. And it gives up heat into the atmosphere. And we have mild winters. A mild winter. Technically we should have an any rate. And this is a natural cycle that goes back and forth. I think we've probably all heard of it. La Nina and El Nino. They're natural cycles. See, the ocean hides a tremendous amount of heat. And paradoxically, and we also all know this, paradoxically, the ocean gets colder further down you go, until you uh, get, to, get to a place where you have methane hydrate ice, which has been touted 
by in some corners as a heat source, a uh, fuel source. So that may be developed. I think it's methane hydrate. I'd have to look that up. But, uh, point is, it's very flammable. You see, the oceans are the main scrubbing uh, system we have for CO2 on this planet. Because ocean ph phytoplankton Ocean phytoplankton basically live and die and fall to the bottom of the ocean and they trap that CO2 in them and sometimes it becomes the methane hydrate or whatever it's called. I'm going to have to look that up. So, Venus doesn't have any oceans to act as a heat sink. That's important because all the energy is in the atmosphere. If you could somehow suck all the energy out of the oceans on this planet and put it in the atmosphere, our atmosphere would be a lot hotter. But of course you can't, so uh, we have what we have and that's the end of it. So, they keep telling us of this runaway uh, greenhouse effect on uh, Venus, and it's just utter nonsense. As is global warming, as we're seeing. See, this is no leftover from the first nor'easter. There's been three rumors of fourth and one. I don't know yet. We don't know yet. That would be, uh near midweek, or something like that, if we have another nor'easter. So, we'll take a look around. Snow's a little hard to walk in. If you live in a warm weather state and you never walked on it, it can be really hard and tough and you can walk right on it, crusty. It can be soft. It can be mushy. It can be all flakes. There's all sorts of consistencies with uh, snow. And we're expecting mid-twenties midweek and that's a major concern for me because we're supposed to be getting in the spring. And it's not supposed to be this cold. But the global warming people don't care. They wouldn't care. If we had carbon dioxide forming at the poles, they'd still say the Earth is warming up. Because this is a political agenda. It's not a science agenda. It's a political agenda. This is the whole point. Well, not much going on here. There's a car across the creek, I think. Too cold for people. Except for fools like me, you uh, like to get out and get a breath of fresh air sometime. But that that is the basic thing. The air pressure on Venus is much many times what it is here on Earth, and that's why there's so much heat energy in it. It's not because of any greenhouse effect. The CO2 probably has very little effect on it. There are no oceans for heat sinks. And of course it's a tad closer to the sun, which definitely makes a difference. Plus the rotation is different. But outside of the part of the, part of the fact that uh, the sun is closer to Venus, or Venus is closer to the sun, depending on your point of view, outside of that fact, the scientists ignore everything else. This is why I get on scientists all the time, is that they ignore facts. 
see, they're not concerned with that. They're not concerned with the fact that Venus's atmosphere is so thick. They are concerned with spreading left-wing propaganda. That's what they're doing with this global warming thing. It is pure left-wing propaganda with very little science mixed in. Now, uh, will New York's 2017-2018 uh, winter ever end? I don't know. I'm beginning to wonder. We should be seeing some changes, but we're not. Here's a forecast in the future for uh, temperatures in the 40s in the daytime, which I still consider to be winter. It'll be better in uh, the 20s than are forecasted for the middle of the week. And God, I hope we don't have another storm. Now I'll take one more look around at your marvelous global warming. And then I'm going to sign off. Saw a sign I was going to get some kerosene at a ga gas station and inexplicably the sign said they were closed due to a family emergency until April 4th. You ever heard of hiring somebody or are you too cheap? Run by a Muslim. Apparently he's too cheap to hire anybody because it's only him there at any one time. I think it's just too cheap to hire anybody. That's weird. That's about it. Global warming is neither. I hope I've given you a perspective on the two planets why Venus is really hotter, so much hotter. And it's due primarily to a thick atmosphere, different rotation, and no oceans, no water, nothing to act as a heat sink. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching.